Hello everyone and welcome back to Shut Up and Learn. At this stage of your life, are you satisfied? Or like me, do you sometimes wish to restart your life in the middle of the night? Can life be restarted? What does it mean to restart one's life? We often think that major changes, such as a new job or moving into a new place, are opportunities to start anew. But life doesn't always go as planned just like the restarts I mentioned earlier. And fee often scripts in when we compare our lives to those in high salary, successful groups. But the recent bestseller, From Strength to Strength, by Harvard Business School professor and former dean of the American Express Institute, Brooke, reveals the hidden struggle of successful individuals. Today, we will explore insights from this book that chronicle Brooke's journey from aspiring French horde player to renowned scholar. At the beginning of the book, Brooks recounts an incident when he was on a plane. It was a night flight, and most passengers were watching movies or resting. However, Brooks opened his computer and started working. He then heard a man behind him sighing continuously and complaining to his wife, I don't want to live. His wife comforted him, saying, Okay, don't think about it so much. At this time, Brooks started to wonder about man's circumstances. He imagined that the man behind him might be the middle-aged and facing a carrier bottleneck, or perhaps his children ignored him, or he felt marginalized by his company. There could be many reasons for his complaint. Later, when the plane landed and the lights were turned on, Brooks was curious to see what the man looked like. He turned around and was surprised to see that the man was a hero he had always admired. A famous figure in the United States, now 83 years old. Many people came forward to salute him, and even a captain came out of the cockpit to express his respect and gratitude. At this moment, Brooke realized that the man who had expressed so much resentment in the dark cabin was now spirit and happy because everyone was showing him respect. He wondered why such a successful person would express the feelings of not wanting to live in the dark cabin yet seemed so happy in spirit when receiving respect from others. Brooks reflects on this and concludes that, in the process of pursuing achievement and success, we often became our own worst enemies. We believe that we need to keep breaking through, challenging ourselves, and growing. But this is not always possible. Just as our physical strength will eventually decline, so will our efforts, and we may encounter problems in our career path. Success may come late and disappear quickly, and that it can vanish completely in a moment. This could lead to a feeling of life going downhill, a sense of helpless and despair. Brooks suggests that the decline in our career can happen much faster than we think. As a child, Brooks dreamed of becoming the world's best French horn player. His dedication led him to debut as a professional musician at 19, performing in hundreds of concerts annually. Yet, despite his effort, his technique plateaued and even regressed, forcing him to leave the professional field after nine strenuous years. This setback propelled Brooks into academia, where he excelled as a scholar. However, curiosity about his past experience drove him to research the commonalities between his journey and those of other successful individuals. Brooks discovered that many in the career winning group faced similar crises. A notable example is Charles Darwin, the father of evolution. When we mention the theory of evolution, we think of Darwin's natural selection. But before the age of 30, Darwin was a spirit person who felt he had made a major breakthrough in human evolution. After his discovery, he enjoyed international renown. However, what happened afterwards? Ultimately, Darwin became depressed and melancholic. He always felt that he could not break through in his early years and was very frustrated and sad because he could not understand why he couldn't make any new discoveries. This tells us that successful in life is definitely not straightforward as we often think. This phenomenon, termed by Brooks as the curse of the striver, denotes the performance decline experienced by high achievers despite the effort. Despite the seemingly bleak outlook, Brooks' research indicates a way out through a psychological hypothesis. It suggests that human intelligence comprises two types, 
Fourth intelligence linked to the logical reasoning, flexible thinking, and foundational for early career achievement. And crystalline intelligence associated with utilizing accumulated knowledge, typically increased after age 40, and may never decline. Brook posits that transitioning from relying on fruit to crystallized intelligence is key to maintaining success. To transition effectively, Brooks recommends adopt three strategies. View work as an end in itself, finding satisfaction in the process rather than the results, reshape life's purpose by focusing on serving others, considering success as a byproduct, reevaluate personal goals by redefining themselves based on crystallized intelligence. Exploring fields that demand rich life experience and knowledge. In this book, Brooks addresses the inevitable decline in professional fields and introduces crystallized intelligence as a second development curve. To embrace this curve, one must declutter and chart a new development path. As change is constant in life, having the courage to transform is vital to escape the curse of the striver. For those feeling lost, this book offers valuable insights to redefine your future. Thank you for joining us today. Consider reading From Strength to Strength to embark on a journey of self-discovery and transformation. Alright guys, shut up and learn.